Hey, hey, how's it going? If you're new here, my name is Jam and I love makeup. And if you're not new, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate you. Today's video is putting all of my luxury makeup on my face. And I say that like a bougie, but I literally used almost all of them because I have so few. <laughs> so it's not gonna be that kind of video. But if you wanna see what I used and how I got this look and what I think of the products, stick around, we're gonna get into it. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, you could totally do that now. I upload a bunch of videos a week. Not usually a full face of luxury makeup, but you know, different stuff here and there. I try to keep it interesting. <sighs> I run out of ideas sometimes. If you got any, leave it in the comment section. I'm always open for new suggestions. Anyway, let's just stop yammering and get into it. I'm about to have a very naked face. Brace yourself. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm sure I mentioned in the intro, which I haven't actually filmed yet, that I just felt like playing with all the quote unquote fancy bits today. It's a regular weekday and I just wanna play. So I'm using my Guerlain lip balm because it's uh, the most expensive lip balm I've ever purchased. But I had to buy it because my bestest bestie in the whole world bought me this little case. I mean, if that doesn't scream fancy, I don't know what does. So that was the first thing I was really excited to break out and play with this morning. Um, the next piece I think we'll do foundation and concealer. Foundation isn't like, it's one of my favorites. It's what I use all the time. It's the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation and mine is in the shade 14. This is one of my absolute most favorite go-to foundations of all time. And I'm not the kind of person who saves like best makeups or whatever for special occasions. I used to be, but somewhere along the line, I realized why. You know, it feels so good to just break out and use the fancy stuff or the best things. And so you should do that all the time, not just for best. So I'm going to squirt some of this out on my little palette. I love this foundation. I'm going to be very sad when it's gone because it's so expensive. But it doesn't require a boatload. Like this will do my whole face and then some. The pump on it is, um, it's like a half a pump. So it takes like four half pumps of this to equal maybe one to two or two pumps of uh, another foundation. But this is just such a lovely foundation. It's really thin. I think it's pretty good or probably pretty good for all skin types. I used to be dry, like really, really dry. And I think this would have worked nicely for me. Y'all let me know if you know for sure, um, like if you have dry skin, can you use this or not? But I'm just going to get this on all over my face and then I'll pop back on when it's all blended so you can see what it looks like. Here we are with one thin layer of this foundation. So not full coverage, but I think are really pretty and I used everything that I pumped out, which feels really good. Now on the regular day to day, this would be it. I would be done with my foundation, but I do want um, a bit more coverage just on some of the more intense hyperpigmentation on my face. So for that, we're going to use my Pat McGrath Labs concealer in L4. This cannot go under my eyes. Whew, that was disgusting. That's what baby say disgusting. I, that would, every time I tried this on my under eyes, it looked so bad. But I decided to give it a whirl on just the spots on my face. And I really, really liked it for that. So I'm just gonna <laughs> add a little bit more there. And I'm going to dot just a bit here and on my nose because my nose and my cheekers 
or where the rosacea is pretty much the worst. So I'm gonna use my little spongy doobie thing and just kind of bloop over. I've decided to use the Pat McGrath as like my highlighted concealer around my face. And I am gonna use my Maybelline Superstay Active Wear Concealer. This is right now like my go-to everyday concealer. So I'm gonna get these on and then I'll come back and we'll do some more. All right, that's concealer done. I know the Maybelline isn't, you know, high end, but I just can't put that Pat McGrath concealer under my eyes. It looks so bad, so bad, oi. I will have to do a couple of cheeky bits throughout this, but only a couple. The concealer, lip liner, and I think mascara are the only things that I don't have that are higher end. So, okay. Let's set all this down. I am very, very oily, so I have to powder. And for that, I have this itty bitty by Terry uh, Hyaluronic Pressed Hydra Powder in colorless. <laughs> so I'm gonna do what I normally do and take my little BH puff that I fell in love with so quickly and I'm going to press that in around my T-zone where I get the most oils. I'm just pressing into the pan. I'm not rubbing or anything. I'm just setting my little sponge in there and then taking it out. I don't want too much powder and I don't use this one much so I don't really know <laughs> how it behaves or what it looks like. I should use it more but it's one of those ones that's like I don't know what possessed me to buy this or why I have it but by Terry is very 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 expensive and uh <laughs> I would probably never replace it. So there's that. I have another powder that I want to use because I don't, as a rule. I used this under my eyes once and it looked atrocious. It is the Charlotte Tilbury number no. two powder. Let me open it. This is just the mini because <laughs> That's what I bought. I was not prepared to invest a boatload of money into something that I wasn't sure I would like. So I did not. So we're gonna use this on my Lunar Beauty LBF number five. I'm not sure what this brush is actually for, but I'm gonna use it to set the perimeter of my foundation. I really like powders. I don't know if it's because for so long I couldn't use powder because my face was so dry. My skin was just such a horrible, horrible mess. But I really enjoy powders. And that looks really nice. I don't think it's looking cakey or heavy or weird. I should start using this more. I don't do panning things because um, that makes me anxious, but it would be fun to use up this powder. So I'm gonna put it in my drawer right in front and I'm gonna use it. There, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't know if Kevin Aqua is considered super high end, but I know is expensive and this is the powder I use pretty much every day. I, I mean once in a while I'll use one of my liquids or I'll use um, the Kaleidos one but this is the one I reach for every time I do my makeup for the most part and I just put a little bit here. I have a natural hollow in this cheek so I just follow that and bring it back and give myself the same kind of hollowed out look on both sides for a bit of sym symmetry. 
I don't know, maybe it's all in my head, but I like how it looks. And then for the all important lip contour, because I'm not getting lip filler, I fake it with contour powder. dip back in for just a tiny bit more. This is an IT Cosmetics smudger brush. It's the one I've used for this for literally years. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Next up, let's do bronzer. For that, I have Pat McGrath. I think everything else except one thing that I have is Pat McGrath because that's, I mean, <laughs> I can get it on sale and that works for me. So I have the bronzer in Bronze Nirvana. I have actually really been liking this and in keeping with using the good stuff on the reg and not saving it for best, I use my Wayne Goss 01 for bronzer these days because uh, I mentioned I'm not switching out my foundation to my summer shade. So that just means I get to use a little bit more bronzer than I normally would. And for that, I needed a bigger brush because I usually use my Refer 04, which is a much smaller angled brush, but I want my bronzer to cover a bit more area. So I'm like, reverse contouring, <laughs> kind of, sort of, staying with the light and just adding the deep, as opposed to, not contouring, highlighting, reverse highlighting, contouring, I don't know, as opposed to using a darker foundation and then highlighting with concealer. It's the same idea. I really like that shade for me. I think it's pretty darn good when I turn, or when I get more tan, I tend to be an orangey red color. So yeah, I'm really liking this bronzer. I don't think it's gonna work for me. I don't think it's gonna work for me in the winter, but for right now, it definitely does. All right, more Pat McGrath. I'm sure you're gonna get sick of Pat McGrath, but this is what I have. I have the Bridgerton Face Trio with two blushes and a highlighter. I will say, um, it's not my most favorite blush. If you're not new here, you know I like a blush. Like a <laughs> knock your socks off. <laughs> Can be seen from quite a distance kind of blush. And this is not necessarily that. So we're gonna go into the pinker one, which is matte and just pop that on my cheeks. I guess if you're more into luxury makeup, you're probably more into understated makeup, but we can pile this on and make it a little bit more Jan appropriate. Yes, I like to blush and highlight the tip of my nose. I think it's cute. So I do it. All right, I'm just gonna get this blended out. Before I go in with highlight, I usually pause here and buff some powder into my skin just to make sure the blush and bronzer and contour is all blended, there's no weird lines. And for that today, we're using the Dior. Ah! <laughs> it just totally fell out. The Dior powder, no powder. <laughs> which again, I use pretty often. I use this, I use my Sephora uh, finishing powder, and I use the Maybelline, nope, L'Oreal powder foundation. So it's, I'm kind of all over the shop with finishing powders, but I think they are pretty darn fun. All right, and last up for the face is highlight, and again, Pat McGrath, this is from the Bridgerton collection. So that is going to be the highlight and all the highlighty spots. 
It's a very nice highlight. I don't think it's as subtle as, I don't know. I don't think it's a super subtle highlight. Could it be worn super subtly? Probably. But I like that it has a bit of a shimmery, sheeny thing. I don't know what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times luxury makeup tends to be more understated. I don't want understated most of the time. I want it to be in your face <laughs> or in my face. <laughs> Cupid's bow. Tip of my nose, my nostrils. And I guess I'll wait to do my eyes until after I do my eye look like my brow arch and inner corner. I think I've decided on a color story for the eye look. I busted out my Pat McGrath Labs Mothership Celestial Divinity Palette. This was the first mega palette she released and this is the first um, eyeshadow I had experience with, with Pat McGrath. Um, so I just swatched these three purple shades and I think my plan is to put them all on my eye. I think. I think that could be really fun, really pretty, and I don't know that I've done a lot of purpley type looks with these palettes. I think I usually do something either very, very, very neutral or like the red. <laughs> as I want to make it go as far as I can. You know what I mean? But I really think these purples are whispering sweet nothings to me today, which I don't know why. I'm not necessarily into purples as a rule, but today I am. So I'm going to use my Wayne Goss brushes and um, of course my Singe Beauty. May not be luxury, but boy howdy, she could be. So let's go into that super deep dark purple on my Wayne Goss number seven. I'm gonna tap that off because I, of course, did not think about what my eye look was gonna be prior to putting my face on. So I'm gonna have to remember to be careful and to hopefully avoid fallout which I'm not normally, like I usually just kind of go in and do my thing and whatever happens, happens because my face isn't done. But that's not going to be today's journey. Today we're going low and slow. <laughs> I can do that. Well, that's really, really pretty. And though it is sparkly, some of the sparkles are kind of falling away or buffing away, but I don't see them on my face, so that's good. I'm gonna bring this under my eye on the outer corner. I really like how that looks as a rule. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna take my Refer 06 and we're gonna go into the lightest shimmery-ish. This is more like a satin than an actual shimmer. And that is gonna go all through my like crease slash transition. We're gonna use this shade to blend out that dark purple. I'm so glad I decided to do this. There are obviously mattes in this palette <clears throat> that I can use if I want to, but I don't know that I want to. That's really, really pretty. And I'm just going to wrap that lighter purple around the edge out here. As this purple shade blends out, it turns almost a reddish 
maroon shade, which I really wasn't anticipating. And I don't know if I'm mad about it or if I'm okay with it. Huh, that's interesting. I definitely don't think I saw that coming. All right, let me do the other eye and we'll figure it out. Okay, <laughs> this is where we are right now. Was I expecting this? Um, no, I was not. Am I mad at it? I don't think I am. Let's trust the process and see what happens when we put on the other purple. <laughs> so now we're going in with the dark shimmery. I think I'm going to wet this because it's going to go all over my lid. And I would really like to not have purple fallout under my eyes. So. That's just so pretty. I'm leaving some space in here because I'm not sure yet what I want to do. If I want to go all the way in with this purple shade or if I want to use a lighter purple or a neutral, I don't know yet. So we will burn that bridge in a minute. I think we're taking the purple all the way in. I could always layer on a light shimmer or a highlight shade over it on the inner portion if it's too much. So let's just finish painting this on. I'll tweak that in just a second. I think this might be the look. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to finish blending that inner part, go with some mascara, some lashes, some liner, I'll come back, show you the finished look. We'll do lips and that'll be that. All right, I'm back and this is the final look. For my lip, I went in with my GPS Place Lip Liner in Cola and the only Pat McGrath lipstick I think I have. And this is in Nude Awakening. It's the metallic liquid lipstick that I purchased when I did a full face of Pat McGrath. The weird thing about this tube is that the cover doesn't shut, like all the way. I can just keep twisting it on and off with just a finger. And let's face it, I'm not known for my strength. There's no way to like tighten it. It doesn't click. It just doesn't like latch. So I've had it sitting up on my desk in my little carousel thingy. Um, I can't imagine it's gonna last long if it doesn't seal. That's kind of weird. But let me zoom you in for an up close of the eyes. I did end up using my Bridgerton palette, the first one. I wanted this blue sparkly shade for my inner corner and I ended up using it as my brow bone highlight as well. So let me zoom you out and we can have a little chat about this makeup. So I really like all of my makeup palettes. I think they are all so good. I can't speak to the quality of these versus motherships. Again, I've never bought one. I can't see myself ever buying one and not in like a judgy way. Just that's not where that much of my money goes at one time. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I don't know. I mean, if she wanted to send me one to like play with, I wouldn't be mad about it. I would totally play with it, but I just can't see me shelling out for a mothership palette. But anyway, I like my makeup. I know the eye look isn't refined and luxury, but neither am I. So it works out pretty well. <laughs> I do like that you can use most makeup in a way that suits you. Not all makeup is like that, which is kind of a bummer because, you know, It'd be nice if all makeup did that, but not everybody wants far out funky purple eye looks out of a wearable eyeshadow palette. That might just be a me thing. Uh, as for the foundation, you know it's one of my absolute favorites. I'm definitely going to try to use that uh, Charlotte Tilbury 
powder more. I don't have anything else from her, I don't think. I think it was just that mini powder that I got. Yeah, I don't even remember why I got it. I mean, obviously I wanted to try it. I was curious, but again, I'll spend a lot of money on a lot of things, but it hurts a bit more when I'm spending it A, on myself, and B, on a makeup thing. So we'll see. Maybe I'll use up that itty bitty one and love it so, so much. I buy a full size. You never know. Uh, but we'll see. And what else? Uh, the brushes I love. The Wayne Goss brushes are so, so, so good. But so are my refer ones. Do it that way, you will. I would really like to maybe someday try the very nice ones that, uh, like, Shawnee talks about. <laughs> Lots of people do. They're really expensive, like, Japanese. Well, I can't, I can't think. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean, though. I have every faith. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's the video. The point, don't save your fancy stuff for best. Use it. Have fun with it. Even if it's just in the middle of the week and you're doing nothing but meeting your sister outside for a little gab sesh at noon. It's your makeup. Play with it. Enjoy it. Have fun. That's the point of it. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Either way, I appreciate you hanging out with me today. Be good and remember to be kind to you.